Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we have some muzzleloading news about a proposed rule change for Arkansas's muzzleloader season. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is seeking public comment about a proposed rule change that would allow straight walled rifle cartridges in the state's muzzleloader hunting season. I will link to the full press release from the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. It has a lot of other proposed rules in it, but the muzzleloader specific one reads as follows. Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is seeking opinions on opening the statewide muzzleloader season to straight walled center fire cartridges of 30 caliber or greater. There are a variety of other proposals within the survey that Arkansas Game and Fish has presented here for sportsmen to comment on, but this is the one that primarily affects muzzleloading hunters and muzzleloading enthusiasts. I'm bringing this up because I think it's important for muzzleloading enthusiasts and sportsmen in general to get involved with the rulemaking process. I don't live in Arkansas, but personally I would like to see muzzleloading seasons across the country be reserved for muzzleloaders. I understand that some states have drawn the line at traditional muzzleloaders, other states have drawn the line with modern muzzleloaders, but we're starting to see this increased encroachment from earlier styled cartridge arms into muzzleloader seasons for a multitude of different reasons. Generally, the argument for the straight walled cartridges is that they are ballistically similar to common muzzleloaders that are out there. These straight wall cartridges have large, heavy projectiles that are moving fairly slowly when compared to more contemporary necked cartridges. But if hunting seasons were all about ballistic performance, then the Arkansas season in this example wouldn't be called a muzzleloader season. To me, what's so interesting about Arkansas's state rules here, at least for deer hunting, is that it's split specifically between muzzleloading and the term modern, whereas muzzleloading just encapsulates anything that loads from the muzzle and your modern is kind of everything else. Really until now in Arkansas, modern meant cartridge loaded, but this proposed rule begins to upend that by changing the definition of what is considered to be modern. And it begins to beg the question, what is modern? As weird as that sounds, to muzzle loading, anything with a cartridge, and in many respects, anything breech loading is considered to be modern. But when we compare some of the very modern, very contemporary, very recently developed cartridges like 6.5, 6.8, 7.8, or 7.0 Western, whatever the new stuff is, these straight walled cartridges begin to look, as some may call them, primitive. Several other states have done this, and with that we've seen a flurry of new straight wall cartridges come out of the ammunition manufacturing industry, and then with that the firearms manufacturing industry because we have these seasons opening up, we have kind of a gold rush in a sense to get arms that qualify, that meet the standards, to sell more things, to get more hunters, more conservation money, we kind of kick up this cycle. The very same cycle that happened in the early 1900s or the mid 1900s, I should say, with muzzleloader seasons, but we're seeing it now with these straight wall cartridges. I don't think that this is a traditional versus modern muzzleloading argument because as stated in the Arkansas muzzleloading rules, they're fairly open. As long as it's loaded through the muzzle, you can use quite a few options, which is where it's at. And I think for muzzleloading enthusiasts, it's my opinion, for muzzleloading enthusiasts to argue a traditional versus modern sense, for this particular case, might not go as well as, it, as many people would like it to go. I think in that case, you're not arguing this rule, you're arguing for another proposed rule that isn't even being considered. It's important in instances where we're discussing these proposed rule changes to muzzleloader seasons to stay on topic as much as possible. In all of the committee hearings that I've watched from several states here recently, being on topic and discussing the minutia of the proposed rule changes is extremely important. Otherwise, comments and discussions are totally disregarded. It's just, I think, a symptom of the system. If you go in arguing a point that's not being presented with the proposed rule, it casts everything aside that you might be presenting. All of your passion, all of your knowledge can kind of get pushed aside. So focusing on Arkansas here with this proposed rule change, this is a proposed rule change to introduce straight walled repeating arm cartridges into what has been since its existence 
a single shot muzzle loaded charge for the muzzle loader hunting season. What is modern? What is traditional? And my question in all of this is, is this a discussion? Is this a debate for my generation, my kids, or my great, great, great grandkids? And how can I do my best to equip them to handle it in a manner that carries on the muzzleloading tradition. And that's why I bring it up, because it's such a dynamic change. The change from muzzleloading arms to cartridge arms in human history was massive. It was huge. Arguably the biggest thing since muzzleloading arms were invented. Absolutely huge. Those kind of massive changes and introductions to a hunting season bring a lot to the table, both good and bad. A major con here for muzzleloading enthusiasts is the degradation of a specific muzzleloader season. Muzzleloading hunters across the country enjoy sometimes just a single weekend where they're out in the woods and they know that anybody else out in the woods is using a muzzleloader just like they are. And that's important for a lot of us. This preservation of muzzleloading arms, of traditional muzzleloading arms in the history, the ancestry that goes along with it, is super important. And every time that gets chipped away, it feels like we're chipping away at the soul of what muzzleloading is, and that hurts. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is at its core working to maintain and preserve a natural resource here. Looking at the numbers of deer harvested in Arkansas over the past few years, harvest numbers have actually dropped to pre-1998 levels. The most recent recorded number was in 2022 with a recording of around 185,000 deer harvested for that hunting season. What I find super interesting in all of this is when we look at numbers from 2008 and compare them to numbers from 2022, the number of deer harvested with muzzleloaders has actually increased, but the overall percent compared to other methods of take has actually decreased. I don't envy the fish and game departments across the country trying to figure this stuff out. You know. In reality, muzzleloading is a niche of a niche that feels like of a niche sometimes. And as far as the hunting industry is concerned, we're just kind of old grandpa over in the corner in his rocking chair, as I've said before. But I think it's still important to bring awareness to this and bring attention to this so that people can make their voices heard. We've seen over my lifetime and even really before my lifetime, a lot of changes with the muzzleloader season. I just bring this up so people feel aware and cognizant of it. Like I said, I've got a link to the Arkansas survey in the video, video description as well as at ilovemuzzleloading.com. I encourage sportsmen, specifically Arkansas sportsmen, to get involved and make your voices heard through this process. In the end, this does not stop anybody from hunting with a traditional muzzler. It does not prohibit that in any way. So even if this does pass and these straight wall cartridges are introduced to the Arkansas muzzleloader season, you can still go out and hunt with whatever muzzleloader you want, whatever muzzleloader you care about. At the end of the day, that's what I really care about. I am bummed though to see the discussions around this encroachment on them. And it brings back another topic that I talk about a lot is we cannot continue to count on these state game agencies to be stewards for muzzleloading for the sport and the tradition. We need to try to do what we can as muzzleloading enthusiasts to figure out how to operate and how to continue on this tradition without the crutch really now, as we're seeing, of these state muzzleloader seasons. These muzzleloader seasons are gonna to continue to change. I personally don't have an argument that is gonna win any of these discussions and keep a muzzleloading season. I hope that as a community, we can find that, but right now, we need to focus on what we can do without these state game agencies to ensure that this continues. I'm continuing to work on and, and follow what's happening in a variety of states right now. This kind of seems to be proposed rulemaking change season. And I hope to continue to study what's happening across the states here to try to share what I'm seeing and get your thoughts as well. So let me know what you think about this proposed rule change. Specifically, let me know what points you think muzzleloading enthusiasts should argue because oftentimes muzzleloading loses out. In this and that's why I want to hear your thoughts on how we can maybe turn that dial a little bit and get a couple wins for muzzleloading here uh, in some of these states. So think about some of the arguments that have been made in the past, think about some of the arguments being made now, and think about how well they've worked. And if an argument hasn't worked, 
what can we do to change it? And what can, we, what can we change about that argument to make it more effective and hopefully continue to preserve muzzleloading and these muzzleloader hunting seasons? For muzzleloading enthusiasts and sportsmen in general who want to get in touch with an earlier form of hunting, with the form of hunting that arguably sustained a colony in an early country and made it so that we could all be here today. I think it's an important aspect and I think these hunting seasons, these muzzleloader hunting seasons, as I hope they continue to be called, are an important way for people in general to enjoy history and connect with the past. That's all I've got for you this week. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Let me know what you think about this. I'm excited to keep this conversation going. You can read the full article at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.